Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Skye and today we are doing part four of my declutter series. I'm sorry this video is coming up a bit later than the rest of them. Um, I'm a bit ill, so that's the reason why. Also, I am wearing the same like two outfits in all of these videos. I can't help it, I'm a Cardian character. I just have like three outfits. <laughs> if you're new to this series or just need a bit of a refresher, I am basically decluttering my entire collection. Well, not everything. I'm going through each of the drawers in my collection, sorting through them, just getting rid of things I just don't use, don't really want anymore. It's not gonna be a ruthless declutter, it's just to kind of pair back the collection to things that I'll actually use and love. But the fourth drawer at the back houses all of my single shadows. Now in this series I tend to swatch everything. Um, I'm still torn on whether I should swatch all my single shadows because I have quite a few. All right, so this is drawer number four. As you can see, my shop, my stash is looking a bit empty. Uh, that's because I took most of it out to take to Greg's place. It will be going back, don't worry. But these are all of my single shadows. They're housed in a bunch of these different palettes. I'll mention where they're from. Uh, and we also have two lethal empty palettes. And what else do we have back here? Oh. Well, that's a highlighter palette from Odin's Eye. I have already done my highlighter declutter and I forgot that I had this. That says a lot, doesn't it? To be honest, I'm so happy with my highlighter collection and this kind of just doesn't fit anywhere. I'll just declutter this. This is a bonus. I'll declutter it, I'll give it to a friend. And then we also have these blotting sheets which should go in a different drawer. And, oh, my little copacetic uh, lunar quad. We'll go through that because I do use this as like, complimentary single shadows. All right, so first things first, these palettes from Lethal are empty. I like to keep some empty palettes for like travel and making color stories. So we're not gonna touch those. All right, to give you an overview, this one right here houses all of my Cleona stained glass shadows. Well, except for two. Two don't fit in here. This one right here houses all my blue purple shadows. This palette is from Colourpop. It's a super old one. Like, it's so dirty and gross. This one is from an Amazon brand called Al One. Um, both of these are from the same Amazon brand. And this one, if you can guess, houses all of my iridescent shadows. I love this palette so much. You can see how well used it is. And then the last one is like an array of rainbow, like, single shadows and two Cleonas. Then we also have the Copacetic Luna Quad, which is just a quad of flaky shadows. So let's, let's do a nice little... Now if any of y'all want to know exactly how many single shadows I have, I don't know. <laughs> I have Discalcula, so I cannot read numbers or count numbers well. Um, I'm not going to attempt to count all of these. If you would like to, um, do let me know in the comments. <laughs> and if you do that, you'll get a gold star from me. I quite like my single shadow collection. I think it's quite well curated, but I feel like we could declutter a few bits because honestly, there's so much here and I have so many palettes and I do want to get more single shadows, which is my toxic trait. But I feel like in order for me to justify buying more single shadows, I need to first like, actually see what I own because I am very guilty of buying single shadows that I realize oh shit I have like three of these already <laughs> let's do this palette first this houses like from pinky red to green and a couple of neutrals so we'll do like the pink to green spectrum so yeah in my Cleona palette I'm just gonna be swatching like these pinky shades and the greens and the yellow. I guess I am swatching these out now that I think about it. Um, so these are a bunch of different brands. Um, I have a mix of obviously Cleona, we have Glam Shop, uh, Dandelions Co, Glaminatrix, Terra Moons, Chaos Dirt, uh, I think Shine by SD in here and also, uh, what, what are they called again? Enchanted Luster Cosmetics. Okay, let's start with these pinks, shall we? So this one right here is Alarm from Glam Shop. These swatches are not gonna be great because we have so many, I don't really wanna dwell on swatches. This is a really good shade to have, I really love it. Uh, this one is Dandelions Co. Bellini. I really like Dandelions Co. mattes. 
I think they're really wonderful and that's a lovely like peachy. We then have, I think this is Turbo Snap. Yeah, Turbo Snap from Glam Shop. I don't purchase from Glam Shop anymore purely because I don't really think they're very inclusive. Um, they are a very accessible brand if you live in the EU, but I just don't really want to purchase from them anymore. But I already have shadows from them that I like, so I'm not gonna declutter them for the sake. I already have them. Money's already spent. This one right here, I think is from Dandelions Co. It's called Fleur. This one actually makes a really nice blush. And then we have Turbo Cotton Candy from uh, Glam Shop. These are all quite similar, and I don't really reach for all of them that much. And I do want to be fairly ruthless because I just don't need all of these. And also keep in mind, I do use a lot of my uh, actual eyeshadow palettes as singles too, like the ones that are magnetized in, like Laminatrix, Shroud, Kaleidos, um, probably a couple others as well. So I need to keep that in mind while swatching these out. Um, I don't think I need this shade Bellini. I feel like I could mix like these two together to get that shade. So I think I'm gonna declutter that one. Part of me wants to declutter Turbo Snap because I just, I don't know. I reach for Turbo Cotton Candy a lot more. Let me just reshuffle these a little bit. I think we'll come back to Turbo Snap. I haven't made a decision yet. And let's swatch the pinks from my uh, Cleona shadows. We have Sunbeam. This one I believe they've reformulated, but I love it. Uh, my lighting isn't optimized for showing shifts. Um, I'm just using natural daylight, but Sunbeam is one of my favorites. Same with this one. This is Kaleidoscope. Most of these are the glitter uh, multi-chromes, if you're curious. I haven't ordered from Cleona in literal years, purely because they're so fucking expensive to get here but I love them, love them greatly. I feel like Kaleidoscope, if I layer that on top of Alarm from Glam Shop, I will get a similar effect to Turbo Snap. Let me, that gives a similar effect. If not, it's shinier. Actually, yeah, I will declutter Turbo Snap then. And then we have Translucency, which I'll be honest, I don't know why I bought this one because I really don't use it that much. Maybe I will declutter this one. I guess let's do the warm neutrals while we're here too. We have Vermilion, which is one of their deep iridescents. I love Vermilion so much. I really want the other deep iridescents too. Such a pretty shade. I love that one. Then we have Bloodline. I remember when this one came out, it fucking shook everybody. And then I believe, I actually don't remember the name of this one. This was a gift from a friend. Let me actually look at your name. This is Eris. And it's a lovely bronze. I don't know, I don't, I really don't reach for translucency at all. And I don't have a tool to take that out. Right, I have my Made by Mitchell, like little spatula. So let's do a bit of dissecting. It's really a shade I don't reach for because I have other pink shimmers that I think of. And then if I do this, we could put Bloodline in here. I do want to get another one of these Cleona palettes, but then that'll make me like want to fill it up. So I am going to hold off on that. Rightio, we're gonna move on to the oranges and yellows now. Okay, we have this one right here from Glaminatrix. This is Nymph. I feel like Glaminatrix have improved their like single shadow shimmer formula tenfold because they just, they keep improving it, which makes me happy. But this is one of my favorite shadows from them. It's such a pretty orangey bronze, like with a bunch of different sparkles in it. And then we have also from Glaminatrix, this is Egg Hunt. It's like your standard orange shimmer. Like, do you see how like, that's just a standard like foil metallic of a cat hair on my arm. And then that one's a bit sparklier but I still like Egg Hunt for like building palettes. I think it's a good shade to have. And then this one I believe is from Glam Shop. This is Glistening Fumes. It's one of those shades that I just think is so gorgeous looking at it. I think I have a shade similar in my Shroud palette though. Hang on. I don't really want to compare palettes to my singles in this video because I don't know, I think it's a bit 
silly, but it seems similar to this shade Sun Shower. Oh yeah, it is. And Sun Shower's way prettier. I think I'll get rid of that one then. Okay, we have the yellow section here. This one is from Chaos Dirt and it's called Blatant. I really like Chaos Dirt. They're a UK based indie brand and I am friends with the owner. So I am quite biased, I'll be honest with you. Um, but they released some new shades that look gorgeous and I really like their like sparkly formula. Blatant's a beautiful shade. This shade I fucking love. It's got such a big dip in it. I think this is Banana Cream from Glam Shop. It's a beautiful yellow matte. I use this shade a shitload. I don't have many matte singles, as you can see. I feel like I should get more though, because they're good for building palettes. Then we have this from Glam Shop. This is... Epigram. I really like that. It's like a yellow with a pink sheen. And we have this shade from Enchanted Luster. I love Enchanted Luster. Um, they're just very expensive to get in the UK. Uh, this is the shade Flare Prism. It's from their Dragon Prism 2 uh, collection. They are quite fragile, but they- oh god, I just took a big chunk out of that. But you can kind of mold them back into place. Like, I would not recommend traveling with these, um, but they are a good Australian brand. And oh god, as you can, I picked up way too much. But that's Flare Prism. I fucking love that shade. I do recommend if you want to buy from Enchanted Luster, do a group order with your friends if you're like international, like outside of Australia. Okay, let's shimmy some stuff over. I actually think that maybe some of these murky colors could go like in this category. Okay, then we have Acidic from Glam Shop. It's very pretty. Not that you can see much of it, but I like it, I'm keeping. This is Spooky Specs from Chaos Dirt. It's an olive with pink shimmers in it. It's quite unique. It gives me the same vibe as Epigram, but olive. It's a very unique shade. And we have this one from Dandelions Co, Calamon. This video is gonna be so fucking long. This one is not swatching great, excuse me. There we go. But it's a nice caca brown that I love. I guess should we stick with like the neutrally brown, like greens? Hang on. We're doing a shimmy. This one is Chrono Prism from Enchanted Luster. Honestly, do I need Flare Prism and Chrono Prism? Honestly, probably not. They are very similar, but I love both of them. But I'm pretty sure this shade is a dupe for Old Mate in the Glaminatrix You Beauty. Let's have a little swatch. Yeah, that's the same. I should declutter that. We have this one right here, which I fucking love. This is Verdigree from the Shine by SD and Seeking Shifts collab. I fucking love this one. It's such a unique shade. I don't know how to describe it. It's like olive green with pink, grey, like, oh, I'm not giving it any justice here, but it's one of my favourite shades. I fucking love it. It's like an iridescent version of Spooky Specs, and I really enjoy it. Then we have this one. This is Abracadabra from Glam Shop. I love looking at this shade, but I don't use it. Like, it gives, again, the same vibes as Verdigris, but I feel like I can make that shade with Verdigris and mixing it in there. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of Abracadabra. I would wipe off my arm, but I still have greens to show you. And I completely forgot that I had to swatch the Kaleona ones. We have this shade, which I believe is called Throne. Uh, let's put that here. Can you see that? It kind of reminds me a bit of Epigram, not gonna lie. Oh, okay, they are different. Probably don't need both, but I, I would like both. And then we have this shade, which is one of my favorites. Uh, I don't remember the name of it though. <laughs> I'll put that here over my lemon. I believe that shade is called Courtyard. Courtyard I fucking love. I've kind of gone off the rails already. Uh, this one right here is Coalescence from Terra Moons. I love this shade with my entire body and soul. It is basically a more intense version of Courtyard, but I don't know, I'm not ready to give up Courtyard. Am I biased because that was like one of my first loves? 
When it came to green eyeshadow, yes. This one was my white whale for, for years. It's actually gen genuinely been years. This is Radiation. Oh, fucking hell. It is the green. Literally, it's that girl. I love Radiation with my entire body and soul. Um, and speaking of, we'll swatch Heirloom next to it. This is one of my favourite Cleona shadows. I've actually hit pan in it. It's essentially a bluer toned version of Radiation. Again, very similar, but they're both well used and well loved. I mean, I've hit pan in Heirloom. We also have Verde, which is one of the deep iridescents from Cleona. I am going quite rogue with these. And then we have Winter Green from Dandelions Co. A pretty green. We have Laser from Glam Shop. This one could be similar to Verde. Just a bit like sheerer. Yeah, they kind of give a similar effect. Verde is just a bit more shiftier. Again, I feel like they're similar, but I do actually actively reach for these a lot more. That's the thing with green eyeshadow. Green eyeshadow is one of my favorites. I will use all of them. So I have used that a good amount. I think I'll keep it for now. Then we have this one. This is fourth di- What? You did not see that, but... What do you mean? As if this video wasn't messy enough already. Oh my god, that just crumbled. Terra Moon's neon shadows are extremely fragile. Um, I should have expected that to happen at some point. And it's not like I'm incredibly precious with my eyeshadows, I'll be honest with you. I'm a bit of a gremlin. I've kind of accepted defeat when it comes to keeping my single shadow um, magnetic palettes clean. So if seeing it so dirty upsets you, I, I greatly apologize, but it's not gonna change. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think actually radiation looks better in that column. I'll swatch that in a sec. Maybe like this, shifting things about. Anyway, fourth dimension is one of their like neon shadows. I should really be swatching on my hand instead. It is such a beautiful bright shade but I'm pretty sure these are discontinued because they do have a bit of- they're quite- they're quite finicky to work with I'll be honest with you but I still love it. Then the last shade in this column- I forgot that one, we'll do that one. And then this shade is Kizar. I used to call it Kizar. I think it's Kizar. I don't know, maybe it is Kizar. Very beautiful. Again, I'm very biased towards the greens, so even if it's similar, it's kind of like if Coalescence and Radiation had a baby, that's what Kizar is, but I I love her. I'm not getting rid of her. I You can see my bias heavily creeping through right now. And then we have, I believe this is Cthulhu from Dandelions Co. I'm not a big fan of Dandelions Co shimmers, but some of them are great. Okay, that finger is not my swatching finger right now. Like, this one is such a nice, blackened, like, deep, metallic green. I have been recording for 40 minutes, um, and we've only done one and a half palettes. But I am quite pleased with that. I did free up quite a bit of space. Let's move on to the blues and purples, shall we? Honestly, Godspeed to those of you on Instagram that do beautiful swatches for literally every single brand. Um, I don't know how you do it because I am covered in sparkle and I feel like a Twilight vampire right now. <laughs> but yeah, this is my blue purple palette. Um, we're gonna go column by column again. Uh, or do we go by mattes versus shimmers? I think we should do all the mattes first because we do have quite a variety of mattes in here. But let's start off with the mattes. First we have this one from Dandelions Co. Oh, this is winter green. What was that deep green called? What was that deep green called? Wispies. I'm so sorry. So this is winter green. It's like a greyish blue. I really like this tone of blue. It's beautiful. This one right here is Winkle 
from DLC. It is a really pretty periwinkle blue and it's one of my favourite like formulas of periwinkle blue. Like it's pastel but it doesn't turn too grey on your eyes which I find some of these shades tend to do. Then we have this one which is New Heaven from Nabla. I don't know if Nabla even has single eyeshadows anymore but they were grey. I mean look at that. I have repressed them into smaller pans because they did come in like 35mm pans which was just a bit too big. God I heard Georgie meowing from outside and I am on like the first floor like I'm not on the ground floor of my house. He's a loud boy. This one right here is Nabla Blue Velvet. I know that for a fact. This is... it used to be my favourite navy but I don't know. I feel like this one's aged not gracefully. My Nabla single shadows are the oldest single shadows in my collection. That's kind of giving dust. It used to be a lot more saturated than that. New Heaven hasn't really aged much, um, but I think, I think I should declutter this one. It's not aged well and oh, it is starting to smell. Hang on. What do you smell like? You don't smell. That's weird. That's suspicious. All right, moving on to the other mattes. This is Dandelions Co. Bru Bruez? Bruise. I don't, I don't really understand their names. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of them I don't know how to pronounce and I'm confused. But this is like a deep, cool toned purple. Then we have this from Glam Shop. This is Sas, wait, I can't pronounce Polish. Sasanka. Sasanka. I don't know what that is. In English but it's from Glam Shop. It's a purple matte. These are insane. Glam Shop mattes are ridiculous man. And then we have from Nabla this is Lotus. It's a very pretty lilac shade and then we have this lavender shade from Dandelions. This is Unfazed. See in the pan they look quite similar but swatched out they are quite different. Um I don't know. I really wish that blue velvet was still good because I feel like it really anchors all of these mattes together but it's just not the same as it used to. Like I know it did not used to perform like that and I think I used it somewhat recently in a Halloween look and I had to take it off because it just did not look good. Right now let's move on to the shimmery shadows. This one right here is one of my favourites. This is Half Moon from Terra Moons. It's not one of their like multi-chromes but it is the most beautiful blue shimmer to ever exist. And I'll swatch that next to Ripple from Cleona. Even if these are similar, which thankfully the tone is a bit different. Would I need both? No, but I use both and Ripple is a bit more duochrome-y. I'll actually swatch all the other Cleonas while I'm here. We have Lineage, which this is such a unique shade. It's really foiled, not really sparkly, but very shifty. I use this one a lot, like during Christmas. It gives me Christmas vibes. It's a like minty shade with gold and pink sparkle, like sheen I should say, not sparkle, it's not really sparkly. This is one of my favourite most underrated Cleona shadows and then we have this one which I don't remember the name of you. <laughs> Shit. I know I could add it during editing but this video is going to be a mammoth to edit that I don't want to add more work for editing. Sky! CL I should say. CL? It's French for sky, that's what someone told me. If someone on the internet tells me that, I'm gonna assume it's true. French followers, please let me know if uh, it is actually French for sky. But I love this one. Is it similar to Half Moon? Yes, but I make an exception for blues because they're pretty. Then we have Imagine from Chaos Dirt. I used to use the shit out of this, but I have not used it in a very long time. It is very pretty, but I think in the grand scheme of things, I don't need it because I have other blues that are similar that I reach for more. I don't really use Imagine that much nowadays. Then we have Ceres from Terra Moons. Terra Moons, I'm not gonna lie, are my favorite like sparkly single shadow brand. This is like a denim blue with peach gold shininess to it. It's the same energy as Lineage, but a different tone. Fucking love it. Then we have Star Sign. 
again from Terra Moons. This one I thought I would love more than I actually do. I might declutter this one. It's not bad, it's just like... I don't know what- I don't know, there's something about it that I just don't really reach for it that much. It seems similar to the Cosmos, which we will actually swatch right now because it's right next to it. This is like Terra Moon's most famous shade. It's so flaky and multi-chrome and ridiculous in the best way possible. I can see why it is like their bestseller. Like look at- stop it! Like from my angle I see like green and blue, from your angle you're seeing like the gold and peach. Like I just use it so much more than star sign. But I don't know, I like having star sign there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get rid of star sign. You know what? I don't have to. I can always declutter it another time. Like I can just keep it. I don't know why I'm putting pressure on myself. This is my declutter, damn it. Okay, then we have, this is from Glam Shop, I believe. This is called Georgia. Lavender blue sparkly shade. I don't think I need this in my collection. It's kind of similar vibes to everything else. I can part ways with this one. Then we have this one, which is an underrated one, uh, Shattered Stars. I, f I say that, I think it is actually quite popular, but I feel like it's one of those like quietly unique shadows that like you can make it really neutral, but really like, I just spice, it's a spicy neutral. Like it just yarsifies things a bit. I really like Shattered Stars. Let me put that in that column. I like having all the mats together in like the last column, but I think Cosmos should go there. I'm just gonna swatch until this arm is like full. I don't want to make the same mistake as the other palette. Um, this one is another beautiful neutrally shade. This is X09 from Bermovich. Bermovich are a indie brand from Belarus and I really like their shadows. However, they are the same energy as Glam Shop, where their, like, diversity is so shockingly terrible. Their representation is piss, but I love this shadow so, so much. Uh, it's one of my favourites, so I will be keeping it. And actually, I should probably put, like, the neutrally shades together, right? That just makes sense in it. This one is a repressed shadow from JD Glow. This is unexpected. I also don't buy from JD Glow because they are anti-abortion, which is not slay in my eyes. But my friend actually like repressed a bunch of her JD Glow shadows into smaller pans and had a bunch of extra. So she was like, do you want some? And I said, yeah, not gonna lie. Unexpected and the Brenlovich shadow are very similar. And I use the Brenlovich one a bit more. So I think I'll get rid of it anyway. Goodbye! These are like bluey shades, aren't they? They should really go here. Fuck it, we'll just continue. This one right here is from Terra Moons. This is Hyperspace. Oh my fucking god. I'm not really a dark shimmer boy, personally. I just, I don't know, for some reason, I don't gravitate towards them much. Except for this one. This was a gift from one of my friends, and it was actually on my Terra Moons wish list, but I didn't expect it to be this beautiful. Do you see how fucking fiery and spicy that is with such a cool base? It's so gorgeous. Like, I've used this a lot, and I feel fucking sexy when I wear it. And I think that's the thing. If it's gonna be a dark shadow, it needs to have, like, a really intense flash to it in order for me to use it. And this is one of the few exceptions to the rule. This next one is Random Specs from Chaos Dirt. Again, it's a deep shadow, but like, it's not as deep as you'd think. It's got like the heavy gray base with the indigo and purpley sparkles in it. I guess I should swatch my Cleona shadows next to these purples, shall I? Um, let's swatch Glazed. This one I've hit pan in. And I believe, personally, it's the most underrated Cleona shadow to ever exist. It's the most beautiful, pretty lilac with a gold sheen. I am a bitch for gold sheens. I really am. And I'm really not doing it justice in this video, but it is beautiful. It has pink sparkles in it. Fucking great. Fucking great. Then we have Stencil. It's kind of similar to Random Specs. The energy is similar. Maybe I don't need random specs then. This Cleona shade, I don't know the name of. 
Hello! This is enamel. This one's a more cooler toned version of stencil. Um, shit. I guess I will put it up here. Yeah, and it gives the same energy. Like, if I layer this over a darker base, I will get random specks. Or just mix it in with stencil. And then this one right here is abrasion. This one is a shade that, like, I always buy in single shadow format. Like, for some reason, I always gravitate towards these. Um, I have decluttered so many in my time that are similar to abrasion, but none of them quite quite are the same as abrasion, but I feel like it's the most dupable one. Like, I don't think you need this in your Clio in a cart, you know, there are other unique tones that are, like, other brands don't own. I think I'm just gonna do these, like, greeny blues. This is Toxic Prism from Enchanted Luster. I'll put it on my hand. Like, Enchanted Luster has really, really different tones. This next one that I'm swatching right now, this is also from Enchanted Luster and it's Sonic Prism. It's quite flaky, so you do need to smooth it out a bit, but it is, like, look at that. Oh, I love Enchanted Luster, you know? And it's different from all the other bluey shades. I completely forgot to swatch my only jeweled multi-chrome in my collection. This is um, Oculus from Cleona, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Straight up, I've barely used this shade. I have swatched it more than I have used it, but I really want to use it more. I always say that about this shade, but it's literally just so beautiful and different in my collection that I'm not ready to give it up, so I will not be giving it up yet. Let me wipe all this off so I can do the last of the purples. This is the skin of a killer Bella. Like, why did they think that that was like, actually like cool to say genuinely i never watched twilight should i watch it is it worth it so we just have these shadows left to swatch and then we're moving on to the iridescent palette so actually i can put this one away because we've swatched everything in here oh gosh i'm tired um this one is actually a franken shadow that i've made um i mixed a bunch of different things and i don't remember what's in it i think like a blue or irid iridescent some purpley shades it's really fucking fun. I do recommend mixing your own eyeshadows with things that you've decluttered if you um, want to make use out of your stuff. But that's this shadow right here. Like, it's very pretty. I would use that as a face highlight a lot, actually. I think maybe this belongs in my iridescent palette because as much as I think it like works in this column, I think this would look better in my iridescent palette. Then we have this from Shine by SD. This is one of their reserve shadows in reserve number five. These eyeshadows are weird. Like they're really rough and flaky. Like they are basically pressed flakies essentially and you really have to smooth them out. But they feel kind of gross in the pan. Like it just feels rough and a bit I don't know how to describe it. They just don't feel nice on your finger. But when you actually have them on your eyes, they are beautiful. That being said though, do I really need it when I have Cleona shadows that I reach for more? Actually, I should have probably not wiped them off. I'll swatch enamel next to it. Okay, enamel is fairly different. What about glazed? No, again, that is fairly different. Okay, but this shadow is X24 from Bramlovich. That just doesn't swatch well in the slightest. I feel like I have other shadows that mimic that. I think I'll get rid of that one. Yeah, reserve number five, I think I'm gonna keep you around for just a bit longer. I, qu I like you. You know what? I like you. Despite having a really fucking weird texture, you're nice. And that actually frees up so much fucking space in this palette. Like, look at that, guys. That's pretty fucking cool. I will, however, be rearranging this because I don't like how that looks. Okay, um, that's bothering me that wintergreen is all the way over here when I think it'd look better there, but I think that's the best I'm gonna do. So we're just gonna close that and move forward. <laughs> now my iridescent palette has been through so many trials and tribulations. It's my most used single shadow palette. I basically whipped this palette out 
literally every fucking time I do a makeup look. It's my most used palette. I have used all of these shadows over and over and over and over. But I feel guilty if I don't swatch this out for you guys. But in the same breath, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a worn down boy. So me thinks because this video is so long, I'm just gonna pick out ones that I think I should just declutter. And if you'd like to see an updated iridescent shadow swatch party, I will do a really in-depth video about this palette. Um, I think that's the best way to move forward because this video is really long and my lighting setup here is not good for showing iridescence. However, the one on my desk is a bit better. But yeah, straight away, the ones that I know are similar are this one. This is from Shine by SD, as you can see, because it's got a fat fucking gouge in it. This is reserve number two. These shadows are extremely fragile. They break so easily. That reminds me of that sun shower shade from that, um, whatchamacallit, that uh, Peaches palette. This one is Meteorite from uh, Terra Moons. Those are so similar. All right, um, my camera battery died and then I just didn't have time to <laughs> kind of go through everything. So I decided to just leave it a couple of days and then come back to it with fresh eyes. So I believe when we were last talking, we were talking about this shadow from Shine by Esty. I've got cat hair on my hand. And how I was mentioning that I thought that this shade was similar to Sun Shower from the Peaches and Dreams palette from Shroud Cosmetics and similar to meteorite from uh, Terra Moons and I actually decided that it was too similar and I don't use it enough so I'm gonna be decluttering it and so far these are all of the shades that I have decluttered like I mentioned earlier I feel like I am just going to leave my iridescent palette for the most part I mean I did get rid of that shine by SD shadow right here and I replaced it with my Franken shadow but that doesn't matter we'll do an updated iridescent shadow swatch party collection video so be on the lookout for that and then the last uh, singles thing that we have to talk about is this little quad from Copacetic Cosmetics this is the Luna quad this is the only thing from Copacetic that I actually own and it's just like a little quad of their flaky pigments honestly the texture of them makes Makes me a little bit nauseous like it's so rough and like bleh, it feels a bit like bleh, it feels a bit like chalk fun fact uh the sound and feeling of chalk makes me want to tear my skin off however when you actually put it on your hand or like on your eyes it doesn't feel like that i don't know if you're gonna be able to see but i like to use these for like a scattered flaky sparkle effect um I basically, I prefer pressed flakies and cream flakies to loose uh, pigment flakies and this one does come in handy. I use these two shades all the fucking time. And yeah, I would be curious to get the Victorian quad from Copacetic because that one has like four iridescent shades. Not too sure how much I realistically need it considering I have, you know, my iridescent shadows, but you know. Maybe one day I'll get it. This one was a gift from a friend, hence why I've got it. But yeah, shipping uh, Copacetic from the US to the UK is quite expensive. So yeah, with all of that said, these are all of the shadows that we are decluttering. We are decluttering 13, I believe. I feel like this video was so helpful because I really got to know what singles I really do have and just to kind of narrow things down. Because beforehand, even though we only got rid of 13 shadows, I don't know, just seeing it like this and just playing with them for a bit it makes me just like get to know them a bit more and really just like hmm, just reignite my love for single shadows so anyways let's get into the drawer and put these back this won't take too long at all <laughs> I will put this Lethal Cosmetics palette into the drawers, but I just want to give you one final look at all the shades that we have decluttered. So anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know. What are your favorite single shadows? Did you like this declutter? Let me know. And now next episode, we're going to be moving on to the eyeshadow palettes. I am so excited for that one. <laughs> I really hope you've been enjoying this declutter series. Truly, it's been really fun to make. Sorry that this video took a little while to get up. Like I said, I'm getting a bit ill. Um, I'm actually feeling worse than I did in the first part of this video. <laughs>
but it's okay, we move. If you'd like to see more makeup content from me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's Fairy Sky right here. I post all my looks there and I'm active on there every single day. And if you'd like to support me further, I do have my own small business, Rain Cloud Candles Co. We're a small queer owned business based in the UK and we make handmade candles and wax melts. The link to shop will be down below along with our social media if you'd like to support us. We will be holding a Black Friday sale and that sale will go on for two weeks. All the information will be on our Instagram if you'd like to check it out. Get your family some nice candles for Christmas. Or yourself. Treat yourself to some nice things. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here. And as always, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!